uh, uh, Dina uh, die uh, zich inzetten voor, uh, voor de positie van vrouwen. Een stoere vrouw met sloppenweken. This is Dina en um, Shelter City guest number 7 uh, for Nijmegen. Um, I am a human rights activist here in Kenya and a women's rights advocate. Being given a chance to participate in the Shelter City program uh, was a surprise for me. Dina was ook iemand die de dialoog of het, het, het contact zocht. En, en niet alleen ja, eigenlijk of het nou volwassenen waren of kinderen, maar dat, gewoon dat, dat, dat kwam wel iets op gang. De opportunity om naar Nijmegen te komen was een once in a lifetime opportunity. En ik heb really enjoyed myself. Mijn stay in Nijmegen, de memories die ik met daar maak, stay with me. Een warme vrouw is veel hier geweest. We hebben heel veel gelachen. Uh, I plan to take you around uh, the, the area that I live in, in Jamburi, which is in Kibra constituency. And so that you can also have a feel of where I come from, uh, the kind of life that I lead here, and just experience at least to an extent um, my life like I experienced yours. Uh, we are going to go around and see uh, some of the sites. <laughs> I was supposed to be cleaning some of the clothes um, and this this is water because we, we, we store water. We don't have uh, water continuously. So we store water, it comes in the night, then we fetch. So this is my neighborhood. Um, um, there is like a housing boom that is happening right now because of the deficit in terms of housing that we have in, in the city of Nairobi. Of course, uh, the houses vary in terms of uh, the rent. Yeah, and the amenities. Uh, on the other side, uh, just on the other side is, is Kibera, which is uh, one of the largest uh, informal settlements in, in Africa. But this is a quiet place, um, and uh, the neighborhood is made up of different nationalities, mostly we have people from all over Africa, Sudanese, Ethiopians, um, people from Congo, and so it's a very eclectic uh, uh, estate, and I love it. Yeah. So, this is a cart holding uh, containers of water, and this just shows how much water is a problem in this area, in the city of Nairobi lack of water. So where we are going now is where I buy my vegetables. <laughs> so this is where I get my vegetables. And this young man is the one that uh, sells to us with his brother here. Yeah. So the Uncle Tuzia Mandiz. So I want to buy bananas for my my niece. They do a good job, these young people. Um, they work very hard. You can see that they are here very early and they have very fresh produce. So basically this is where we, we buy our food. This is my local shop. Uh, I want to get some credit. My phone is running out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So this is this is I'm on a railway track. This uh, railway line uh, comes from the city center. 
to Kidra area and it, it caters for the people mostly that live in the informal settlement. And as you can see, it's an old railway line, it's a colonial railway line. And even the railway system in this country is not as advanced as the one in Holland. But we make do with it and it is helpful because it's also very affordable. That is where we've come from. That's my where my house is. So as you can see, the railway, the railway line divides is the one that separates where I live to the informal settlement. And it is a very uh, large area. There's a lot of encroachment that has happened and grabbing of land, but um, the government is trying to deal with that. This is Muruna. Uh, we've just met him on the tracks and he's the owner of the, the cows you can see. And um, you can see because of there's been a drought, so the animals are not getting enough water. So he has to walk with the animals all the way. All the way from Kajiado, which is very far, to get for the for the animals to get uh, food. So as you can see we still have uh, Kenyans who depend entirely on on, uh, on cows and animals as their source of income and livelihood. So, and this is right in the city. It's the cold season, so most people um, come to, mark, to buy things like this in the market. And they are second hand, so it's affordable for ordinary Kenyans. So this store belongs to Jeff. Trying to show me some of the items he has, and this business is also uh, it employs a lot of young people. This whole area is where they sell second-hand uh, things, from bicycles to shoes. Yay. Then Kentucky. I hope you will some We have um, uh, well, so many war cemeteries all over the world, and even Kenya has many. Nairobi has a few, so it is. It is a very respected area. So this is a very nice and peaceful place to relax. It actually reminds me of uh, being at the park in Nijmegen. It brings back memories of how I used to feel in the park and how peaceful it was. Um, the, the greenery and the flowers also remind me of Cook and Cove. Um, the experience there was just incredibly wonderful because uh, you understand that most of the flowers come from Kenya and what they've done at the facility at Cook and Cove is just um, that they've added value and and it's just a wonderful place to be. Mm. There's a lot of cutting of trees that has gone on uh, around Nairobi. This is part of what Nairobi should be like. And we are, we are, that is one thing that I carried from, from uh, Nijmegen and, and Holland, the environmental consciousness of of the people in, in Holland and, and particularly in Nijmegen. Where we are at right now is a memorial for Mau Mau, which was a movement that fought uh, the colonialists. Uh, and basically, 
they brought down the, the empire, the British Empire, uh, and and um, helped in the liberation of our nation. Now, where we are at right now, we use the the memorial um, as a symbol of of hope and freedom. And in most cases, when we have, as activists and human rights defenders, when we have campaigns or um, demonstrations that we are doing, or actions against injustice, this is where we normally assemble, because it has that, um, there is that feel that we have when we are here. It is a public space. Uh, that people of all walks of life, Nairobians, come and relax in this park. And so it is, it is like a big oak tree that gives Nairobians uh, shade in whatever circumstances that they are facing. In the liberation struggles in Africa and uh, also in Kenya, women took part, and most of the time the story of women and how they contributed to the liberation of, of nations in Africa and even Kenya are not well documented and are not mostly spoken about. So it is symbolic that the sculpture also has a symbol of a woman which reminds us the importance of peace, the importance of the importance of human rights, the importance of uh, women's rights, the importance of just living together as one, regardless of uh, our different backgrounds. Uh, we are in Kisli. It's uh, a suburb in the outskirts of uh, the CBD. So this is where I was born in 1975. Name. And it wasn't, it did look like this, but there's been a lot of changes in terms of infrastructure, in terms of even the people that live here. It is now mostly uh, populated with uh, refugees of Somali origin or um, uh, Ethiopian origin. I don't mind the, the way you called Pangani and uh, right outside Pangani Primary School and uh, this was my school. I, I, I did my primary education in this school. Most of the things that I learned about leadership, being passionate for the community started and so I'm grateful to the teachers and the community around this place that instilled in me some of the values that I hold here up to do. The area is, is largely now um, populated by, by uh, non-Kenyans non, uh, non and, and refugees from the Somali community. And so uh, it is multicultural, so to speak. Anthem and uh, the motto of the school, then we go to our different classrooms. And you can see uh, we, we, we concentrated so much on tree planting. I believe some of these trees have been there for years. So the environment was very important in our nature. The motto of the school. Some of the values that we were taught and that are still being taught in the school, patience, achievement, nurturing, attitude, things like that. So this is where I, I, I did my high schooling and 
there are some of the most memorable experiences as a student I had here. And uh, I learned so much ah, but... in this place. Uh, I appreciate my, my teachers, yeah, because they really instilled a lot in me. I continue to liaise with other uh, alumni of this school. So this is a place that sees a lot of people in a week uh, that come for various reasons. We have preachers, we have young people that just come to these picnics. And sometimes I also come to just relax. This is a place that I hold dearly because uh, most of my political work that I've done and the governance work, the roots have been here. And I've learned so much, I am still learning so much. It is also a space that, uh, if it wasn't for the vigilance that the human rights defenders and the activists here have, it would have been developed. But we've always stood firm and said that this part belongs to the uh, I think this is the last uh, spot in our journey. I think I've answered most of the things that probably somebody would want to know about myself. But I want to say that uh, all I know really was the opportunity to learn so much in terms of diversity, in terms of good governance, in terms of uh, just uh, how systems can work. And so I brought all that to me. Uh, I have been able to share whatever I learned with students. Because even in Holland I was able to go to so many different universities to speak to students. And I carried whatever I learned and the experiences that I got and share them here in Kenya. I am forever indebted to the people of Netherlands for giving towards the shelter city.